Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth. This is Frizzy Lizzy Stitches. Today is February 20th, 2023, and this is floss tube number 38. <laughs> um, so it's been two weeks since my last video um, and we are in a quite a different setting um, we're in my usual spot and it is also morning and not night <laughs> so um, I actually have today off um, today's President's Day and it's Monday so yeah I I don't think I've actually had President's Day off at a company that I've worked at before this might be the first time so kind of fun because um, I feel like you don't usually get a holiday in uh, February. I feel like it's usually Martin Luther King and then you don't get another holiday until like Memorial Day or something. But yeah, I am very thankful for my three-day weekend. And so I actually was trying to be very productive at the front end of the weekend so that I could spend the last half of the weekend doing fun things. And I've been successful so far. <laughs> um, so I, let's see, Saturday, I like was like cleaning day. So I cleaned the bathroom, vacuumed, laundry, all that stuff. And then um, yesterday, Sunday, Bobby had a day off. So we actually kind of celebrated Valentine's Day uh, later since yesterday was the 19th. Um, and we went to brunch at this really cool place downtown. Uh, it was so yummy. <laughs> um, and then we came home and kind of just chilled uh, for the rest of the day, which was well-deserved for both of us um, to not really... I mean, Bobby was doing laundry, but it was very much a passive task. Um, we both pretty much got to relax, uh, which was nice. And then today, he's back at work. I had the day off. So I had several things that I wanted to get done today. Um, before I drive down to Cincinnati to go to Keepsakes. That is my plan today. So it's actually like 8.45 this morning and I've been up since like, well, my alarm went off at like 5.30. I didn't get out of bed till like 6.30, but I have already washed the sheets and put them back on the bed. And um, what else did I do? Well, I guess I was just kind of gathering my stuff for the video today. Um, Cause I wanted to make sure that I got this video filmed um, before I left to go to keepsakes today. If I have time, I might try to edit it, but um, I feel like it's just gonna be me filming and then editing this evening. So maybe the video will co go up on Tuesday. You will know because you're watching this. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I have three projects to show you uh, today, and two of them are WIPGO goals, and then one of them is just a project that I I started it and I finished it and I was obsessed with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I guess, let's see. Um, what have I been up to other than what I already said? Um, I did get a new office chair, so it, I have it covered up with a blanket, but it's like white and gray and um, it's very comfy, much more comfortable than the uh, dining chair that I was using. <laughs> um, I, I guess I got this desk like pretty much shortly after we moved here. So it would have been last summer, and I've been using a dining chair with it since then. So it wasn't until like last week that I finally broke down and ordered a proper desk chair. Um, but I really like it. The only thing that, I mean, I purposely bought this one because the, the arms like go up and down so I can like push it all the way under the, um, the desk. But it doesn't like recline any which is fine, except for when Piper's like messing around in the kitchen and I'm trying to like lean back to see what she's doing. <laughs> um, can't very well do that, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> uh, that's just a very minor inconvenience, I guess. I couldn't really do that in the dining chair either, so anyway. But yeah, so um, I've been stitching. I've been playing Stardew Valley with Bobby. Uh, he's not on night shift anymore, which is nice. Um, I don't know if he'll have it again this kind of, um, for the rest of his intern year, but we shall see. Um, yeah, I actually also organized my fabric and floss drawer, which I'm very, um, happy about. I'll put a little picture video thing up right there. Um, I ended up stacking all the fabric, like, um, not stacking it, but uh, like filing it, I guess. And then I like cut a piece of foam board that was like, um, the same width as the, the drawer so it would stand up on its own so I could like kind of 
make sure that the fabric was stay standing up and then behind that I kept all of my color and cotton floss which I finally took out of all their little bags <laughs> um, so that's really fun I am very happy with that drawer because it also makes it easy to see what colors of fabric I have um, whenever I go to try to kit up a project from stuff I already have so yeah and then let's see I wanted to thank you all for your very kind comments on my last video. Um, a lot of you appreciated the chill vibes that I was throwing out there, <laughs> um, which I really appreciate. I was honestly very happy with how that video turned out, so I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it too. Um, and then my t whole spiel about the UK <laughs> resonated with some of you, um, which I was glad. And you guys also showed some love for the, the animals, and I know they appreciate that, even though they don't really understand. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Wilson's kind of chilling over here by the patio window, and Piper just went to go get some water. So, and then one thing that I did want to um, return back to was the single-strand loop method. So, um, we talked about this last time, and briefly the video before that but um one of you kindly sent a video to me on instagram um and i cannot remember the name of the person who posted the video but i will have it linked in the in the description box below um she does a really good job showing you how to do um, the loop method with a single strand of floss and honestly i really don't understand how it works but it works and it's kind of magic and I love it. So that is definitely going to be my new go-to for st starting my thread when I'm stitching with one strand. Um, so if you have not given the looped loop method with single strand a try, um, go check out that video that is linked below and try it because it honestly is kind of life-changing. Almost as life-changing as learning how to do loop method with two strands. <laughs> so yeah. Um, like I said, I'll have that link below. I, I got to put that to the test a lot on my Halloween Quaker, um, which you will see today. And yeah, I think we can go ahead and start talking stitching. So um, let me kind of recollect and grab my projects. <laughs> okay, so the first project that I worked on since last time was Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. Um, let's see. It's going to look like this. Uh, this is a super popular pattern. Um, I feel like everybody has either has it in their stash or has started it or has thought about starting it. It's just, I feel like it's a cult classic. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I'm stitching mine 100% as called for. 40 count murky, the classic color works, all that jazz. Um, let me move my needle minder over. All right, so... This is what it looked like last time I showed it to you. And uh, this is what it looks like now. So I, let's see, I worked in the bottom left corner where like that tree and stuff is. Uh, I finished up the spider motif. Actually, I think the spider motif was finished last time because I actually talked about that in my last video, how I thought it was something with it was wrong. And one of you, uh, confirmed that there is indeed a chart um, correction on Lila Studio's website. So, but what I thought was wrong with it, it actually was not wrong with it. I thought that this little piece right there was in the wrong spot, but actually this whole leg was in the wrong spot. And then there were a couple stitches missing elsewhere throughout the motif. So, anyway, um, if you are stitching this pattern, definitely go to Lila's Lila Studios website to get that um, chart correction. But um, honestly, it makes it easier to stitch because in the chart that you buy, um, the spider motif is like on a page uh, break. So that little um, chart correction it has it all on one like page or whatever. So it makes it actually easier to stitch it because you don't have to read over the page break. So yeah, okay. What else did I do here? Um, I believe... I don't think the bat's new. I feel like all I really worked on after correcting the spider motif was pretty much all of this stuff right here. Um, and this is kind of like a little Halloween town that kind of goes in this area. So, started that over here. Um, but yeah, the whip go goal was to stitch on this for five hours. 
and uh, I worked on this for three hours in the last two weeks to uh, get me to that goal finish. So, but yeah, it's looking great. Um, this is not on my whip go goal anymore <laughs> or whip go board anymore. So I am not going to pull this out again until October because um, as much as I love spooky things, um, spooky is not the vibe for me right now. <laughs> um, I kind of am just like at the point where I'm ready for winter to be over. Not because I'm tired of the cold, but because I'm tired of my outfits. <laughs> um, I feel like I don't, I feel like my winter wardrobe is not very extensive. So I definitely wear the same clothes over and over again, and I'm kind of just bored of my cutesy little winter clothes. So <laughs> anyway, um, but that is Halloween Quaker. And like I said, that is one of my projects that I use one strand of floss. Um, so I did use the single strand loop method to start my thread. And again, that video will be in the description box. So seriously life-changing. I don't know. I was totally missing out to be honest. <laughs> okay, so the next project I have to show you is one that was totally not um, on my radar until um, the pattern came out and then I was, well, no. It wasn't on my radar because I didn't know it existed. <laughs> because it didn't exist. Um, but anyway, this pattern came out shortly before Valentine's Day and I was obsessed, like really obsessed. So I started it on Saturday the like 11th and then finished it on Monday the 13th. So um, this is Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It's called Love Letters and they're, it's kind of a duo pattern. I'll put the picture up right here. Um, they're two little raccoons <laughs> um, named Ralph and Ruby and the pattern is very pink, very pink. And um, they look like stamps and that goes along with the whole love letter thing and it's just freaking adorable. So anyway, I was obsessed particularly with Ralph. So that's the one I started with. However, I did already cut my fabric to stitch Ruby. So I don't know when she's gonna happen, but I finished uh, Ralph because I was so obsessed. So. This is what, this is what he looks like. Holy freaking cow. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Um, so this fabric is called Summer Soiree. Um, let me see if I can kind of pull it back so that it's a little more accurate to, I guess, the color. I feel like um, it's pretty vibrant. I feel like it's a little bit washed out on the camera. But anyway, it's called Summer Soiree. It's from Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. This is 36 count. Uh, I did stitch with two strands over two, and I used the called for floss. However, the light pink, which is like his shirt, kind of blended in a lot with the, the actual fabric. Like in person, you can see, um, you can see it, but it's pretty close. So I just took the media, like the darker pink, that's the same pink for the X's right here, and I kind of backstitched around his shirt just so that it would pop off of the background a little bit more. And I think it, I think it worked really well, so. But yeah, it, he's just so cute. And I love him so much. And um, my plan is to turn him into a little pillow. Um, I'm, I'm thinking like velvet, like red velveteen on the back with like white pom-poms. And I already have the white pom-poms, but um, I'll have to see if maybe Keepsakes has some of that velveteen or, Else I'll have to order it from somewhere. But I'm gonna see if I can get you closer. Look how stinking cute he is. I just love his fountain pen and the little bow. It's just so adorable. So yeah, I was obsessed. This like consumed my weekend. I stitched on it for 11 hours and 40 minutes. And I'm pretty sure that is a record for how quickly I have been able to start and finish a project like this. Um, it is, I think the stitch count is like 60 by 60 or something like that. Um, so yeah, stitch this one up super fast. Um, and like I said, I worked on it for three days. So I'm super excited about it. Um, like I said, I do intend to stitch Ruby, um, but I'm just not sure when I'm gonna do that, so. <laughs> Um, 
And then this was kind of like, I guess this was inspired by Frosted Pumpkin's previous pattern that they came out with for the Jingle Ball called, well, there's two patterns. One is Clementine the Fox and the other is Coulter the Fox. And it's kind of the same concept where it's a boy and a girl of the same animal species and they're supposed to be like boyfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> and anyway, so I definitely want to stitch the two foxes, Clementine and Coulter, um, but we will see. Um, I feel like I would probably stitch those closer to winter time, uh, but we will see. This was kind of just like, I really wanted to stitch on something pink so bad. And this was, this just called to me. So, but he's adorable and I love him and he's going to be a pillow someday, hopefully soon. <laughs> okay. So the last project I have to show you today is my, um, other whip go goal. It is Alice in Wonderland by Satsuma Street. Um, it's going to look like this when it's done. And this is what it looked like the last time I showed it to you. And mine is in the cute snap because I was working on it yesterday but this is where I've gotten to. So the goal this month is to do the caterpillar block, um, which this is the caterpillar block. Um, Alice is right there. Um, but yeah, we got this giant mushroom. The caterpillar is sitting on top of the mushroom and then has his little hookah or I don't know, whatever he's smoking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and I think there's like a little baby mushroom right here and another one there. And then I think the pattern should, the, the whole block should fit in this little window of the Q-snap. Um, but yeah, so far I've spent three hours on this. Um, and I feel like this block might be a third of the way there. So maybe six more hours will get me a finish on this. I don't really know if that's going to, um, I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to complete this goal this month because... Today's the 20th, um, and come the 25th, part two of the British Isles stitch along is going to come out, so I will switch my focus over to that. But honestly, if I can get it as much done as I can, um, I won't be too mad if I don't finish it this month because I technically have the rest of the year to finish the goal on my whip go board. So, yeah. But um, good so far. Uh, this fabric is 28 count. Um, ice Blues Ligart Linen and using all the called for floss um, and yeah that's pretty much it. The little needle minder right there I think is from Mad for Minders and that might be it. <laughs> so yep um, I did so I don't know I'm sure some of you have thought of this before but this is a mint um one of those plastic like the icebreakers except for this is like the aldi brand but anyway i finished it and i took the sticker off and i thought this would be perfect for keeping in my project bag to put my orts in when i'm out stitching um either at a retreat or at keepsakes because then you can just leave it on your table with the lid open and then it just i don't know we're, we're gonna put this to the test today but i'm very excited about the idea of it uh because i think it's gonna work really well so <laughs> I will keep you posted. Okay, so that's all of my projects that I worked on in the past couple weeks. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot, but I mean, I did start and finish a whole project. So I would say that I did a lot of stitching. <laughs> um, I guess, well, three plus three, six, 17 hours basically of stitching between the three of those. So I'd say that's pretty good. <laughs> um, okay, so for my plans, um, I do intend to keep working on the caterpillar block for Alice, try to get as close to completing that whip go goal as I can. And then when British Isles part two comes out on the 25th, I'm gonna start working on that. And then, um, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I am, uh, I was designing something, uh, cross stitch, um, for myself and I, had been working on it for a while and I finally finished it Friday night. So my plan is to find some fabric um, to stitch it on today while I'm at keepsakes. Um, so I'm going for a lavender. Um, so we will see what I find. Um, 
but I did already pick out the colors, but I might have to tweak them based on what fabric I find because some of the floss colors are also purple. So yeah, anyway, I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to show it to you guys. Um, I think I, I don't think I want to wait until I'm done stitching it to show you because um, it is on, it's not as small. It's like, I think it's like 100 by 80 or something. Um, so it definitely will take a minute for me to stitch, but I might show it to you after I start the project, just um, so I know that the colors I've picked are really gonna work. Um, but yeah, so those are kind of my plans. Uh, I'm super excited about my pattern that I've made um, and excited to get um, some fabric so I can start working on it. Even though, you know, I have like so many other projects that I <laughs> want slash need to be working on. Oh, but it's fine, whatever. Honestly, that was kind of one of my inspiration with stitching Ralph is like I was so motivated to stitch something pink and cute that when that pattern came out, like I was literally only missing two DMC colors and Bobby and I were going to Lowe's and Joann's is right next to Lowe's. And so I was like, let me just run in here and grab like some floss real quick. <laughs> and uh, then I came home and I started it that day. And then I think I was just like, I got to a point where I was like, oh my gosh, I've made so much progress. Let me just keep pushing to see if I can finish this really fast. And I feel like that kind of motivation is just kind of um, very vital when you do a cre anything creative because I feel like if you don't take advantage of the creative moment, it, you'll lose it and then you just never will do anything with it. Um, so that's kind of how I'm feeling right now too about this pattern that I made. Um, I really want to just stitch it and be excited about it and be in the moment because if I don't then I probably never will stitch it and then it'll just be sad you know what I mean <laughs> so um you'll have to let me know if you relate but that's kind of how I'm feeling about the whole thing right now um okay so I think that's it for today's video a little bit on the shorter side however I do have one book that I want to chat about really fast um so if you're not interested in books you definitely don't have to stick around um but yeah, so so the book I want to talk to you about today is called I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Uh, this is what the cover looks like. Um, I listened to this on audio, and Jeanette McCurdy, the author, was actually also the narrator for the audiobook, which was fantastic. And this is kind of like a, I guess like an autobiography memoir situation. Um, so first off, I think the, um, the cover art for this book is absolutely perfect. Um, I think the contrast between like the appearance of it being really cute and fluffy mixed with the deep um, meaning behind and like the, the dark title and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think that contrast is really honestly perfect. Um, but the entire book, Jeanette kind of talks about um, what her life was like growing up with her mom and being a child actor and all the sort of things that kind of she didn't realize was a problem at the time until later on down the road when she was trying to overcome her eating disorder and you know start like learning how to learning what her mom did to her um, and all that sort of stuff so it's definitely a very um, heavy conversation but the humor that Jeanette has in the book makes it very digestible and very entertaining to listen to um, because um, since she's the way she's telling the story is from herself, but starting when she was like, I don't know, four years old or so. So you get a lot of that child innocence in the storytelling at the beginning. And then as she kind of grows this and the story grows, she slowly starts to realize that some of these things that have been happening to her are not, um, not good. <laughs> um, so it's a fantastic read. I would highly recommend it. Um, Janet McCurdy is, if you're like, I feel like I know this girl, she was very well known for her role on iCarly. She was, um, Miranda Cosgrove's, like, best friend on the show. They're best friends in real life. <laughs> but, um, anyway, she was kind of like the side, side character, best friend in that show. And, um, yeah, so I watched iCarly growing up. Um, so it was kind of cool to see that Jeanette, you know, because I hadn't seen or heard of her in forever. Um, nice to know that she is still, you know, I guess working her creative muscles, <laughs> if you will. So yeah, anyway, it's a fantastic book. Highly recommend. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> um, okay, so 
that is all my projects, all the uh, book chat and whatnot. Um, I hope you're all having a great day and I will talk to you again in two weeks. Bye.